How's it going guys, Andy here, and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to talk to you about these Tradescantia, a beautiful and easy houseplant to look after. We're gonna be doing a species guide, and if you remember in the past, we've already talked about Tradescantia zebrina, a beautiful uh, trailing plant, and this is in the same family, and it has a lot of the easy to care for traits as well. So this one is Tradescantia spas, the spathiacea, spath, spathiacea, spath. This is Tradescantia tricolor, Moses in the basket. Let's go. Alrighty, let's dive into the species guide then. These guys originate from Mexico, warm, dry type of environment which is great for us because if you are the type of person that is a bit forgetful with your house plants and may forget the odd watering these guys are perfect for you because they will tolerate a little bit of neglect and i'm certainly guilty of that with these guys they may look wonderful at the moment i'll give you a bit of a, a close-up there you go check these guys out look at those colors and at the back let me just pull the back of the leaves down you've got that bright red turn it around that way look at the bright red of those um those leaves absolutely stunning and so much variegation so interesting and every new little plant that comes out is a whole new opportunity for really interesting variegation this one is actually in a homemade pot that I made myself with some natural jute twine that I plaited together and uh, put round the pot with some hot glue. If you've not seen that video, I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, it was about a year or so ago, maybe even more. So if you wanna have a go at making a, a homemade plaited pot like this, they're quite good fun and uh, you can make them any size you like. So check that one out if you like, but don't forget to come back here because today, we're talking about these Tradescantia. So propagation, as you can probably see, is by division. You get these lovely little offsets growing at the base of the plant. So plenty of gifts for your friends. That's a good bonus. And also you can make them into massive plants. If you keep the offsets in the, uh, in the pot and put it in a bigger pot, then they just grow bigger and bigger uh, with all the new plants. You can just create anything you want out of it, or you can just have lots and lots of individual plants if you like as well they are prolific growers easy to grow and i just can't get over the color of the backs of these leaves they're fantastic so much so that this particular one i keep in my office as you can see the color scheme is like color color scheme is like a gray a muted gray color in my office and this one i keep high up on the top of the filing cabinet and it just cascades down over the pot and it allows me to see the underside of those amazing leaves because it, it sits higher up anyway. And so a really nice way to display them higher on a shelf, on a higher shelf or something, so you get to appreciate all of the different colors. If this was right down by your feet, you're only gonna be looking at the top and you're never gonna get to appreciate the vibrancy of the underside of the leaves. So that's the two that I have. I've got some other smaller ones dotted around here and there that I've repotted from time to time. But let's talk about the care really quickly. Super easy. As I've already hinted to, if um, you are someone that can be a bit forgetful with your watering, these guys are gonna be fine. They just tolerate it. They'll sit there patiently waiting for you to come back and water them, give them a really good water, and they'll be fine. They don't even really wilt like, um, like peace lily peace lily tends to let you know when it's not had enough water give it a water and it perks straight back up again these guys will just sit there look exactly the same give them some water and they'll carry on growing away absolutely fine they'll take a range of temperatures and conditions they'll take baking hot sunshine within reason um, they will um, they will take fairly chilly nights these are in my back porch over the winter where it probably gets quite quite cold down to 10 degrees celsius something like that they're absolutely fine they get the extreme heat as well in the summer in there it really gets up very hot no problem at all they are the ultimate 
easy to care for houseplant and I absolutely love them and I love doing these videos because I get to remind myself how stunning these plants are and just spend a bit of time with them because they are great and cheap to buy readily available and when you do get one you've got one for life because they prolifically um, offset and so you can just keep take them out I'll do a separate video on uh, propagation and, and repotting at some point just to give the specific steps but essentially you're just dividing them carefully and making sure there's a bit of root on the new offset put it in the pot and you're good to go very simple but yeah I, I love them super easy often overlooked in my opinion I think people go for the more headline grabbing the superstars of the houseplant houseplant world sometimes the the variegated monsteras and uh, all of the interesting syngoniums and things like that but these guys I still really appreciate them and the the ease of use and the ease of care makes a big difference because when you've got a lot of plants I've got a lot of plants there's a lot to water which I enjoy but if they were all, you know, turning the hills up and dying every time you miss a watering, then it would be an expensive hobby. So these guys are dependable. You can put them in a place where they look great all the time and you haven't got to stress if you're a couple of days past the watering date, uh, you're still going to have a great plant to enjoy for many years to come, really. They just will keep growing and will keep uh, appreciating in size and color and vibrancy. Um, Right, lastly, uh, feeding, average amount of feed. I don't feed these guys very often, only if I happen to be feeding other plants, I'll give them a bit of a feed, maybe once a month, something like that. Doesn't need much. Uh, a lot of these plants that come from hot climates like this are used to surviving off very low amounts of feed. And so, yeah, for that reason, no problem at all with uh, the lower end of the feeding spectrum. But as with anything, the more water, care light and feed you give it the faster it's going to grow and the more bigger and bushy it's going to grow so if you do want to grow a big plant then a little bit more of everything it will respond to that as well so in all i think it's a great plant if you're a beginner certainly get one of these look down below for a link to where you can get one and um, even if you are a seasoned house plantist I would definitely recommend it because it's easy to overlook, easy to forget that the simplest and more ubiquitous houseplant can still be stunning and really enjoyable and satisfying to grow. Thanks very much for watching. Give me a shout down below in the comments. If you have any questions about this, please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful or helpful in any way and subscribe for more houseplant related videos coming along very soon. Bye for now.